Uh, solar air heating is a very simple, inexpensive way to get into using solar energy. Um, air is not a very good carrier of um, heat, uh, but it is inexpensive. And if you have a, a, a house that is tight with minimal um, leakage and uh, thermal um, radiation to the outside, that can actually be very feasible, even in, uh, in um, Illinois. And then we have our solar hot water. Um, heating, which is uh, very well proven. Just a quick uh, diagram of how a solar um, air, hot air system will work. Essentially you mount the collector on the side. I n never recommend mounting one on the roof because of the excessive heat gain in the summertime. Your sun angle will be lower in the wintertime. There will be more direct radiation getting into the um, unit. Cold air comes in warms up, uh, rises, exits out the top. Very simple, minimal moving parts. You can put a small muffin fan in there, uh, run it off a small uh, photovoltaic panel, so when the sun shines, the fan runs. Very simple, on off. Could really. they give more heat than just sticking a window in there? Um, it depends. Yeah, actually it will because there will be a uh, absorber plate in there with a selective coating, so it will actually absorb more than just the window. And the problem is too with your windows, your windows really, despite all the marketing hype, you're really still only seeing an R, maybe two or three insulative value. So you have a hole in the wall compared to say an R19 or R21 in the wall. Here you really don't have a large opening. You just have two small two to four inch ductworks, which you can actually block off with uh, venting. And so you have very minimal um, leakage but the, the secret is to have a tight house because you don't want to lose more heat than what you're bringing in. And, and these do work. Um, if you want to just plan on heating, say, one room, a living room, a family room, that kind of a thing during the daytime, um, something like this is really nice. But again, the secret is how you install it. And a lot of people put them up on the roof. That's really a mistake. You want to have them on the wall. Uh, solar hot water is uh, quite feasible. We have flat plate collectors and evacuated tube. These units down here, which are called batch heaters, are more suited for warmer climates. They're, they're very popular in the Caribbean and so forth. Um, evacuated tube systems, if you go down in the Bahamas, Caribbean, you'll see these on almost every, every house. I mean, I, I don't know why we're not doing it up here, but um, they work quite well. And uh, this is just an example of a unit that we did down in Shelbyville and I wanted you to see the snow and the frost on the collectors and then notice what the tank temperature is, 137 degrees. The set point on the tank is 120, so we're already 17 degrees above set point. So there's quite a bit of uh, excess heat there which uh, can be drawn off during the day. And uh, a very simple um, unit um, compared to what just used to be out a few years ago which was essentially a concomitant conglomeration of um, pipes and pumps and uh, valves and now you can actually integrate a very compact system that meets state plumbing codes in all 50 states, double wall heat exchanger, pressure relief valve, um, your dual pumps, solid state controller, everything can just go right on the side of the water heater and you can actually use the water heater as a storage tank so you don't have to have another 80 gallon storage tank so with the limited amount of uh, space typically available for utility purposes in a home, um, this is a really nice way to go. And of course our favorite, uh, making electricity from silicon based solar or solar thermal collectors. Again, we've, we've discussed this and how viable it is for large scale installations in the southwest and under the right circumstances and with good design that can actually be utilized 24 hours a day with the latent heat that uh, is uh, left in the fluid overnight. All right, here's the fun part. Um, real, real basic things. The sun radiates the equivalent energy of, in space, which is called a solar constant, at 1,366 watts per square meter. A square meter for us um, U.S. folks is roughly uh, 10 square feet, okay? 
nice and simple round numbers, and that is the uh, energy available in a unit area. Now, when we get down to the earth, we start losing some of that energy because of the atmosphere and the air and the dust that the solar radiation has to go through. And that is called air mass. And when you look at the back end of a solar panel, you will see that there are some very specific test conditions that that panel was subject to and that they have developed to give a standardized method of um, energy production. So they use an air mass of 1.5. If you were on the equator with the sun directly overhead, you would have an air mass of 1. Here in Illinois, and most anywhere else off the equator, because the sun now is shining at an angle, air mass of 1.5. So you have some slight reduction in uh, solar radiation. Does that really not vary, uh, you know, from Illinois to Texas where there's a lot less moisture in the air in the southwest? You know, there's, there's really so much variability. I mean, even on a day like today where we've got more haze, we, we have dust, we have humidity. I mean, you have so many variables and they had to come up with a standard because you can't account for all the variables. You really can't. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, I mean, there, there is, you might say in Texas, they may have an air mass of say 1.2 because they're a little closer to the equator. Um, but they're using as a standard air mass of 1.5. If you were to look at the energy output of any uh, solar energy system, you would essentially see a sine wave like this. So you start out sunrise, it increases toward noon, <clears throat> you have a little what I call hang time, a peak, and then you start to see a decrease. And um, so your solar irradiance, which is your unit of energy given at a um, point in time, now when we spread that out over the uh, period of a day, we have solar irradiation for time. And so that lets us know how much energy is available during the given portion of a day. And they have come out with some wonderful maps that I'll show you here in a minute. This is what a real-time display looks like. I just grabbed this uh, off of one of my uh, sites yesterday to give you an indication of energy production for a 1.1 kilowatt system indicator. Notice the top slide, which uh, I grabbed uh, last week, <clears throat> we obviously had some clouds because any time we had some interference f uh, passing in front of uh, the sun, we had a significant drop, boom, it went back up again once it passed, and it would do that throughout the entire day. Of course, this here, I, just, I grabbed it about halfway through, so we had a cutoff. I did grab this last night. I thought this was kind of interesting. I really hadn't paid much attention to it before. Um, if you notice the difference in power output too, here we're barely clearing uh, 800 watt hours per day. Um, um, I'm sorry, um, 800 watts peak output. The top one is a little bit higher and that's probably as a result of temperature differences because I believe it was cooler last week by about 15 degrees. I mean it really does make a difference. Also, I thought this was quite interesting here, this little flat spot. And I think this is as a result of the diffuse uh, cloud cover that we had yesterday. And so instead of having um, a peak, as we saw in the previous slide, we actually had more when the sun was at its zenith for here, because of this haze or, or cloud cover that we had, it actually spread the light out more. And as the sun crossed that zenith and started to come back down again, um, we, instead of seeing this peak, we had more of a flattening out. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but that kind of gives you an idea. I have no idea why we're still getting energy output here. All I can think of is there may be some reflection coming off of a street light or something. But if you were tracking the sun, these would be very different. <clears throat> they would be, but you would still, you would have more of a uh, broader output because you know even if the Sun if your tracker was facing say east you're, you're, you're not going to have peak output it's still going to start off low because the Sun is low it has more atmosphere to go through so your air mass is higher and dust and uh, so you would st still have minimal irradiance you would just have a longer wave 
All right, as I mentioned, they have extrapolated, extrapolated data over the years and came up with a solar resource map for the U.S., which essentially states how many kilowatt hours per day, square meter, kilowatt hours per square meter per day, uh, we have available. <clears throat> Illinois has roughly right between four and five kilowatt hours per square meter per day. It's comparable to uh, Miami, so we don't write Illinois off at all, to be honest with you. It's, it's very good. Of course, your, your peak here is in the southwest, but then we have some other factors that come into play, which I'll explain. 